Okay, let's talk about polynomials. Polynomials are another type of function uh, defined to be functions made of sums of powers of x multiplied by a coefficient. So here are three examples. You see all there is to these are uh, these terms where we have a power of x like x to the third power multiplied by a constant coefficient like 4. And then you add all those together and you have a polynomial. Now this last one might look a little weird because I'm using a t instead of an x, but that's totally fine. You can use any parameter you want. All I mean by powers of x are powers of the input or whatever parameter you're using. Um, so you can use t, you could use q, you can use whatever you want. Uh, but those are three examples of polynomials. You can uh, classify polynomials by their degree. The degree of a polynomial is defined as the highest exponent of x. So here in f of x, for example, the highest exponent that we have is an x to the fourth. So it's, that would be called degree four. It's a degree four polynomial. g, on the other hand, would be a degree 51 polynomial because that's the highest power that we have on x. And h would be a degree two polynomial. Uh, because the highest power is 2. You might recognize this function as a, as a quadratic equation, um, and that is true. This is a quadratic equation. Quadratic equations are just degree 2 polynomials, so they're one kind of polynomial uh, that we talked about earlier in the course. I'd now like to talk a little bit about graphs of polynomials, but not too much, because the uh, graphs of polynomials are not very predictable. You can have two polynomials that have very similar looking graphs, but very different formulas, or you could have two polynomials that have really similar formulas and really different looking graphs. So uh, for that reason, I don't want to dwell too much on the graphs of polynomials. I can tell you uh, at least this much, which is that if you have a polynomial of degree n, it will have no more than n zeros which means it, it won't cross the x-axis more than n times, and it will have no more than n minus 1 turns. Uh, and by turns, I mean goes from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa. So let's look at an example. Here's a polynomial. This happens to be a uh, polynomial of degree 3, so it's like x cubed plus some stuff. Um, you see it has two turns, right? That would be 3 minus 1 turns, and three zeros, three times it hits the x-axis. Uh, so that's a good hint that it's a uh, cubic polynomial or one of degree three. However, another cubic polynomial uh, looks like this, where it only has one zero and no turns because it's increasing the whole time. Uh, so that's another polynomial of degree three, but it looks totally different. So you can't infer a whole lot about polynomials just based on their graphs. What I could infer about this first uh, polynomial that I've drawn here is that it, it cannot possibly be of degree two because it has three zeros, and uh, a polynomial of degree two can only have at most two zeros. So you can figure out what it isn't, uh, but not always uh, what the polynomial uh, formula is, just from the graph. So that's all I'm going to say about graphs of polynomials. The nice thing about polynomials is that they're defined uh, for all input values of x, and that's because all that happens in a polynomial function machine is basic addition and multiplication, with the only hitch being that you're multiplying the input with itself. Um, so for that reason, it's, there's, there's nothing complicated. It's not as complicated as like a logarithmic function, um, but it will have weird looking graphs, uh, and, and they're not just transformations. Uh, you can't just transform an, an x cubed graph into an x to the fourth graph. They're totally different. Okay, let's talk about solving polynomials or solving polynomial equations. There'd be an equation like this, where we have x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Uh, you've seen that before, that's a quadratic equation. In fact, there's a formula that will solve that equation, which you get just by completing the square on this quadratic equation. Uh, but that's not usually the case. Generally, solving polynomials is difficult. It's generally difficult. Um, that's why we, it took a whole two videos, maybe even three videos, to talk about quadratic equations. Uh, and that's, you know, comparatively one of the simpler kinds of polynomials. There are more complicated formulas to solve polynomials of degree 3 and degree 4, but there are no formulas uh, for degree 5 or more. And that's not because we haven't found the formulas. That's actually a proven fact that no formulas exist for polynomials of degree 5 or more. Uh, so this presents a problem because we don't have a way to get an exact answer uh, to those polynomials. Um, however, I'll be showing you some algebraic tricks in this video, which will let you solve polynomials that are not degree 2, uh, using only what you already know about quadratic equations and degree 2 polynomials. So that's what the rest of this video is about, these algebraic tricks. Uh, the first one is factoring out the common term. Um, so here's an example of a cubic polynomial, one with degree 3. Um, it looks like we can't solve it because I don't know the formula for cubic polynomials. Um, but the way we can solve this is by factoring out a common term. So you look at these terms and you realize there's an x 
in common in all of those. So what we're going to do is factor that x out, turn this into x times the quantity x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. And now by the zero product property, the solutions are going to be when x is 0 and when this quadratic equation is 0. Well, you can solve this quadratic equation. You know how to solve those. Um, this one happens to be solvable by factoring. This becomes x plus 3 times x plus 2. So your solutions are going to be x equals 0, x equals negative 3, and x equals negative 2. So that's your three solutions, which are all the solutions uh, for this cubic polynomial, uh, found without you having to use a formula and only using the algebraic trick and knowing how to solve uh, quadratic equations. So that's our first example. Let's do another example of the same sort of thing. How about 2x to the 10th plus 3x to the 9th minus 9x to the 8th? You see these all have uh, an extra x to the 8th that we can factor out. So this becomes x to the 8th times 2x uh, squared plus 3x minus 9. Uh, again, now we just have to solve a quadratic equation to find the other zeros, one, with one of them being when x to the 8th is 0 or x equals 0. Um, you can solve this quadratic equation by factoring. You're going to have to use a box. Um, we're looking for factors of negative uh, 18 that are going to add to 3. That would be 6 and negative 3. Now you can write the common terms. Okay, so this becomes x plus 3 times 2x minus 3, and those are your other two solutions. So you can solve these to get x is negative 3 and x is 3 halves for the, all the solutions to this 10 degree polynomial. It's degree 10, so it's, it's unsolvable. You, there's no formula that you can use to solve that, but if you can do the algebraic trick, then you can solve it. So that's factoring out the common term. The next trick is called substitution. This, I think, is harder, uh, a harder trick. But the way this works, so you see this 10th degree polynomial. There's no common term I can factor out here, but the trick is to make a new variable, call it u, and I'll let that equal x to the fifth. Now I'm going to rewrite this equation with u instead, and I, I get u squared plus 8u plus 12. So OK, fine, we have a quadratic equation. We can solve that. This is factorable. It becomes u plus 6 times u plus 2. Um, and then we get the solutions u is negative 6 and negative 2. However, remember, we're not looking for uh, values of u that solve this. We really want values of x. So once we find the u solutions, we have to find the x solutions by uh, using our formula here that u is x to the fifth. So if, if u is negative 6, that means x to the fifth is negative 6. And x to the fifth is negative 2. So our solutions are the fifth root of negative 6 and the fifth root of negative 2. So substitution is harder because you have to um, you have to have an, the extra step of going back to the new variable and figuring out what the x values are rather than just the u values. Let's do another example. I'm going to let u equal, neg equal uh, x to the 32. So this becomes u squared plus u minus 6. That turns into u, um, u plus 3 times u minus 2 which give the solutions u equals 2 and negative 3. Uh, but there's a little bit of a hitch here because we have x to the 32 equals 2. That's fine. One solution is going to be the 32nd root of 2. But the other solution we're getting is x to the 32 is negative 3. And you can't raise a number to an even power and get a negative number. So that's not even a solution, right? It's like having x squared equals negative 2, right? It's not possible. There's no number. So in this case, the only solution is x equals, uh, this is actually plus or minus the 32nd root of 2. I forgot to use the plus or minus there, but those are your two solutions. So that's basic substitution. Now I'm going to ramp it up a little bit and talk about substitution with functions instead of just, uh, I guess, x squared is a function, but substitution with more complicated functions. Here I have a 2 sine squared x plus sine of x minus 1. Do you see how this is a quadratic equation in disguise? Right, if I just make a new variable, let's let u equal sine of x, this becomes 2u squared uh, plus u minus 1. And now I factor this uh, using the box method. Um, I think this becomes, we have a 2 and a negative 1. So we get just a negative 1 there, 2 there, 1 there. So this turns into 2u minus 1 times u plus 1. So our solutions are u is negative 1 and also uh, 1 half. Uh, but now we have to go back to our definition here. We actually get that sine of x is negative 1 and sine of x is 1 half. So you can solve those 
uh, when do you have the y coordinate equal to negative 1? That's going to be at x is 3 pi over 2 uh, plus any multiple of 2 pi, 2 pi n. That just means go around the circle as many times as you want. You actually get infinite solutions for that. And also, when is uh, sine of x equal to 1 half? That's at x equals either pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6, both of those plus the multiple of 2 pi n. So this can be ex extremely complicated when you throw in trigonometric functions like this, but again, it's just a quadratic equation in disguise. And I guess that's pretty much what this video was about, solving uh, polynomials that are really quadratic equations in disguise. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.